Okay, what about the translation work? Any any questions on this? Mm-hmm. How do we know it's Jesus spoke to them rather than Jesus? Oh, okay. Doesn't he give you apen as a vocab word somewhere i forget exactly which chapter it was yeah so this is a past tense form it's just something that you've learned already and uh, why do we take jesus as the subject of that verb because it's nominative case and that's usually for subjects right so it's going to be jesus said and then dative to them but that's why other questions Sure, let's look at number five together. Mm. <laughs> All right. We will try to unmingle your mangalosity. Number five, let's read this together. Uh, let's do it in unison. See how well you can read, okay? Apostale ha huias tu anthropu tus angelus altu. All right. Uh, can you find a verb anywhere? Apostole. Okay, so here, here's what we always want to try to do is try to find your verb. I, I suggest marking these things down when you can find them, okay? So there's the verb. So the verb will either be he, she, or it will send. Or if I can find an actual subject, what case would it be in? The nominative, then I'm going to translate it as that, that nominative noun will send. Okay, now do I have a nominative noun? Yes. Where is it? Ha huias. I'm going to underline it here. So some of my friends, and I remember doing this when I was in um, junior high, uh, we would underline with single underlines the subjects and double underline the predicate or the, the verbal part. But I'm just going to underline this for now. So that's my subject. It's nominative case, right? But now look, I have a genitive noun phrase article and noun, both with the genitive case ending. So I need to be asking myself, does that genitive noun go with hahuias as a head noun? And if so, I need to bracket these together so that they function as a unit. How would I translate this if tu anthropu goes with hahuias as the head and genitive noun? The son of man. The son of man. So it would be the son of man will send. Okay, so that whole thing functions as the subject of the verb. And then I have tus angelus. You see the us us? Notice how your article is going to help you here to, to see that you've got uh, accusative plural here. Um, so that's great. That would seem to be functioning how? As the direct object, because accusative nouns are usually direct object nouns, right? But Look at L2. What case is that? That upsilon there. That's genitive. And that means I need to ask myself, does this genitive noun go with the noun before it as the head noun plus the genitive noun? And the answer is yes, because there's nowhere else for it to go, right? So it's I'm going to keep these together in my, in my rendering. Don't separate them in your translation. The... Angelus, what's that? The angels of, that's genitive, I'm going to use the keyword of, the angels of who? Of him. The angels of him. Remember, altu is genitive, singular, and masculine or neuter, right? Okay, so you could, you could translate it as his angels. Okay, I like to... Uh, and, at least to start with, to translate it um, with that of keyword, the angels of him, which then means his angels. Okay. Now, uh, why am I going with his and choosing the masculine form when the neuter is also possible? That's right. Pronouns refer backwards to something usually. And what's it referring backwards to? Yeah, the son of man. So son is masculine, and therefore I'm going to, if I had to write down my parsing, I'd go with masculine and not neuter. 
Okay. Now, if I had seen a neuter noun over here and then out to, then I'd be thinking this is probably neuter and not masculine. Okay. So, uh, tus angelus autu, his angels, is the direct object. So, see how once I've bracketed these things together, I have a pretty simple statement. If I can use uh, X's and Y's, it's basically X will send Y. You see that? What is the X? It's this whole expression. The Son of Man will send, what's Y? His angels. Does that help? That was easy, wasn't it? Yes. All right. Anything else? Okay. Let me go back. Let me go to 10, and then we'll go back to you. So with number 10, uh, let's read this out loud and in unison. Arche tu evangeliu iesu Christu huiu theu. All right. So uh, what does arche mean? Okay, the beginning. Now, I have tu evangeliu. What case is that? It's genitive. Yes, genitive, singular, and what gender do you think this is? Ah, have you had this as a vocab word? It's an eight, so we have, don't quite have it, but it, it's ta evangelion. Ends with a nu in the nominative singular. It's neuter, okay? So genitive, singular, neuter. And um, RK is the head noun that this is modifying, so it's the beginning of the gospel, right? But look what I've got next. I have Yesu Christu. That's what case? That's also genitive, singular and masculine. And it is modifying that as its head noun. So notice I have a chain of head noun genitive. So this is genitive in relation to the head RK, but Evangeliu is the head noun in relation to its genitive, Yesu Christu. So it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then I have Huiyu Theyu. Now look, what case is that? That genitive? Yeah? Okay. So um, here's the question. Is this, is Yesu Christu the head noun of Huiyu as its genitive. Is that the way it works? If you assume that, then it would be the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ of the Son. But he isn't Christ of the Son, is he? So what do we have here? Um, the genitive construction where we have head, genitive, and then that genitive is the head of another genitive phrase. That is broken here. And <clears throat> what, we've, what we've got is uh, something called apposition. Okay? Apposition is when you have a noun that stands next to another noun, and it rephrases or renames or recharacterizes the noun that it's beside. And the question here is, uh, why is this in genitive case if it's not a genitive in relation to this as a head noun? And the answer is this. Anytime you have an appositive, a noun that's in apposition to another noun, it always shares the same case as the noun it's in apposition to. So since Yesu Christu is genitive, it's a positive, has to be genitive along with it. So it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, namely, that is, the Son. Okay, now, theu is genitive. Why is it genitive? It's not genitive because it's an apposition. It's genitive because huias is the head noun and theu is modifying it. The son of God. Okay, so the whole expression, the son of God, is really the appositive. And it's renaming Jesus Christ. It's telling you his identity in different terms. Okay? I think we talked about appositives last time, didn't we? So you see how it might have been enough to just say 
the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But by adding the appositive, Mark's constraining you, I think this is from Mark, um, it's constraining you to conceive of Jesus in relation to God as the Son. And because that identity is important, isn't it? All right. Now, does that help? Ever asked? Yeah, so it, it, it's funny, isn't it? I have one, two, three, four, five, six genitive nouns all in a row, and they all look like they're doing the same thing. It's the fact that trying to make huiyu, a genitive noun modifying Yesu Christu in the same way that these genitive nouns modify their prior nouns doesn't work. He isn't Christ of son, you see. Uh, anyhow, back uh, uh, in the back here. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So it is the case that if you were looking at a Greek New Testament, you would see brackets here, and there would be um, at the bottom of your Greek New Testament in what's called the critical apparatus uh, notation of certain manuscripts that omit this, and certain manuscripts that have it. And uh, it is a text critical issue um, where you'd have to weigh the manuscripts and the possibilities to try to you know, come to an understanding of whether you think this is original or not. Um, here, l I'll, I'll pull it up real quickly. So if you look here, uh, this is the Nestle Alon 28 text, which is the most recent edition of the critical text. And um, you have this Arketu Evangeliu, Yesu Christu, Huyu Theu. And notice that it is in brackets in the text. So what the editor has done is he's included the wording, but put brackets there to indicate that there is some doubt as to its authenticity. Now, if you look at this next resource I have, this is Bruce Metzger's textual commentary on the Greek New Testament. And he indicates that here, right after Christu, you have again in brackets, uh, this is the grade that the committee gave uh, on the, uh, the probability of that being original. It gave it a C. C indicates that the committee had difficulty in deciding which variant to place in the text. They weren't sure whether they should have just had Christu full stop and then put a note there to say, look down in, in the text, and then they would say, Huyu Theu is in some manuscripts. Here they are, and is not in some, and, and here those are. Uh, it was um, enough for them to leave it in the text at the top where the scriptures are and not to relegate it to the bottom. But then Metzger, and this is a very nice thing about this work, Metzger will then give you some of the reasoning of the committee as to what they thought was going on here. So this is what he says. The absence of Huyuteyu uh, in these witnesses may be due to an oversight in copying occasioned by the similarity of the endings of the Namana Sacra. Namana Sacra are the divine names, okay? They're usually abbreviated in, in some of the manuscripts. Uh, and um, so... You've got, um, well, the, the abbreviations um, are going to have upsilons at the end here. And it's possible when you have similar endings, you might look at your text, write down, and go back to the upsilon you thought you left and accidentally skip to the next word that also ended with an upsilon and go, okay, this is where I'm starting again. And you end up skipping over text that is in your exemplar, the one you're copying from. On the other hand, there was always a temptation to which copyists often succumb to expand titles and quasi-titles of books, since the combination of these witnesses in support of Huyuthi was extremely strong. It was not thought advisable to omit the words altogether. Yet because of the antiquity of the shorter reading and the possibility of scribal expansion, it was decided to enclose the words within square brackets. 
So uh, if they felt really strongly about it, they would have taken the brackets out and said, we think it's original. But there was enough doubt that they just weren't sure. So they put it in brackets there. So there's your textual criticism lesson for, for the day. Any final questions about the translation work here? Sean, did, did we get your an answers? Okay, good. So, yes. I, I just had a quick question. Mm -hmm. Number six with um, clone the unknown, which is uh, genitive plural. Uh, is it just tra translated heaven? Because I, I, I looked up the answer one now. It says mm -hmm. check my stuff. And he, he just puts it as singular. Is yes. Because he's familiar with like, what it says in the Bible and always says the kingdom of heaven and, and not because the text actually Right. Yeah, there, there's an issue here with the fact that um, the expression, the kingdom of heaven, or, or actually the expression of heaven where it's referring to this notion of uh, what, what in Hebrew is called shemayim. The shemayim is, is heaven or the heavens. The word in Hebrew is actually not singular. It's, uh, technically, it's a dual form. But for all intents and purposes, people think of it as plural. So it's a word that's plural in form, and we've tended to translate it as either heaven or the heavens. And in Greek, the, the word heaven, when it's translating Hebrew, often reflected that plur plural form of Hebrew, heavens, even though technically it was conceptualized as singular. Okay, So when I say you know, the God of heaven or the God of the heavens, um, you know, that really it's saying the same thing. Um, so, so anyhow, uh, yeah, I, I suppose he's probably just translating it singular because that's the way the text in English often does it. Um, but I think it's plural because of that, that Hebrew issue going on. Uh, this is also true in Aramaic. The, the Aramaic word for heaven is actually a dual form. Or plural form. Okay. Anything else before we part ways with this chapter? Are you all happy? Okay. Good. You're all experts now. <laughs>